Be careful what you put in your body. In 2014, a couple returned to their home to find it trashed in baffling ways. There was lotion all over the door handles, all of their shoes had had their soles ripped off of them, and someone had dumped an entire can of paint all over the toilet. Despite the obvious break-in, the police come and can't find any evidence of theft, so they leave thinking the couple's not in danger anymore. That night, the couple hears scratching underneath their bed and what sounds like a crying animal. Not wanting to find out what it was, they leave and call the cops who come right back and start investigating the house, and they make a startling discovery in their bedroom. Wedged underneath the couple's bed was this 90-pound tiny little woman carrying a huge butcher's knife and a hypodermic needle. As they're taking this crazy lady away in handcuffs, one of the officers comes over to the couple and is like, so she was high on meth and for at least two hours, she had been burrowing a hole in the underside of your mattress with that knife to get to you. This is why you should always check on your kids. In 2017, a single mother of two was laying in bed early one morning. Like most mornings, she'd lay in bed while she'd listen to her three-year-old and five-year-old play games together downstairs. But this morning was different. She could not only hear her kid, but she could hear the voices of two men downstairs talking to them. She quickly gets up and runs downstairs, only to find her two daughters just happily playing. When she asks her daughters who were the men they were just talking to, they respond and say, that's Danny and Matthew. Freaked out, the mum says to her five-year-old, sweetie, who's Danny and Matthew? The little girl says, they live up in the roof, mum. They play with us every morning before you get out of bed. Freaked out, the mother grabs her two daughters and runs across the road to the neighbors. She calls the police. When the police finally arrive, they search the house and find two deformed men up in the roof space. The police tell the woman that they both have the mental capacity of a five-year-old. And by the looks of the setup up there, they'd been there for a while. Haunting photos taken seconds before the end, part one. The woman in this photo, Courtney Sanford, took this selfie and posted it to Facebook with the caption, The happy song makes me so happy. A few seconds later, she collided with a recycling truck in a fiery blaze that claimed her life. This photo shows a man named John Jones who was exploring Utah County's Nutty Putty Cave. While he was exploring, he became stuck and was trapped upside down for 12 hours until he died due to cardiac arrest. This is the last picture ever taken by Filipino politician Ronaldo Dogsa, who accidentally captured the face of his assassin and moments later was shot and killed. This photo from a surveillance cam shows two-year-old James Bulger holding the hand of a 10-year-old boy at a shopping mall in England. The 10-year-old boy, along with one of his friends, abducted, tortured, and murdered James, making them the youngest killers in British history. This is why you should never talk to strangers in an elevator. One day, a surgeon was working the night shift at a hospital. He just finished his operation on a patient and was going to the basement. He entered the elevator and there was one other woman already inside. They were casually chatting when the elevator door opened and another woman was about to enter. But the surgeon looked horrified. He quickly slammed the close button and punched the highest floor of the building. Surprised, the woman asked why he was being so rude and wouldn't let the other woman in the elevator with them. The surgeon explained that in this hospital, all patients wear white wristbands with their names printed on them, but the red wristbands are placed on all of the corpses. The surgeon then looks to the woman in the elevator with him and says, That was the same woman I just operated on. She died on the operating table. Didn't you see the red wristband she was wearing? The woman in the elevator with him just smiled, raised her arm, and said, You mean like this one? This one might make you afraid to have a girlfriend. Hunted Relationships In 2012, a boy Nathan said his girlfriend died in a horrible car crash. They were dating for five years. He was struggling trying to get over it and was grieving for about 13 months when he got a Facebook message. It was from his dead girlfriend, Emily. He thought it was her mom on her Facebook page, but it wasn't. A few more months, the conversations continued and she kept making references to the past relationship that they had that only they knew about. He started getting notifications of her on Facebook of her tagged in spaces that she should have been. He knew her Facebook passwords and changed them and the messages and tags still kept coming. She would write weird messages like she's cold, she's freezing, and that she didn't know what was going on. To this day, he doesn't know if it was some type of sick joke or really a message from the dead. Give this video a thumbs up if you want more true scary stories. This is why you should always lock your crawl space. In 2019, a young woman had just moved into the second floor of an apartment building. She noticed a tiny crawl space that connected all the apartments on the floor, but she wrote it off citing, who'd be small enough to crawl through that? 
One night, she walks into her living room and out on the fire escape is a tiny woman desperately trying to yank open her locked windows. Terrified, she hides behind some furniture until the woman eventually leaves, at which point she runs into a room, grabs her phone, and calls the police. While waiting for the cops to arrive, she hears something above her and she looks up. One of the ceiling tiles had popped up and the woman from the fire escape is staring down at her. She'd used the crawl space to get up there. The girl screams and the woman scurries away. It took three days for the police to finally get the woman out of the crawl space and bring her into custody. Turns out she was on some unknown, extremely hard drug and had totally lost her mind. This is the story of the doll maker. A young boy was killed by a car and his parents were devastated. His mom couldn't cope with his death and was on the brink of suicide. In desperation, the husband hired a doll maker to make a doll version of their son. When the mother held the doll, she was convinced it was her real son. He gave the husband specific instructions to never go outside of the house with it, or else the illusion of the real son would turn back into a doll. Weeks passed and the mom spent all day and night with the doll, and the husband couldn't stand the sight of it anymore. He forced his wife and the doll outside so she could finally see the truth. But when they got outside, the husband was paralyzed. His wife was a doll too. Here's why you should never go on the world's tallest water slide. In 2014, in Kansas City, the world's tallest water slide, the Verricht, was opened at Schlitterbahn Water Park. The Verricht has a 168 foot drop, which then shoots you up a rise on the slide and then descends another 50 feet into a pool. The combined speed of the 17 story drop and the water jets caused the ride to have a 400 pound weight requirement to keep it from going airborne. In 2016, 10-year-old Caleb Schwab was planning to ride the Verricht with his 12-year-old brother Nathan. Due to the weight requirements, the two were separated, and Nathan went first while his brother Caleb was seated with two older women. But witnesses reported that their weight did not meet the requirements. At some point after the 168-foot drop, Caleb was thrown from the ride and hit one of the metal rings supporting it at nearly 70 miles an hour. Reports say that the 10-year-old had a fatal neck injury and was decapitated, while his 12-year-old brother witnessed the incident and screamed hysterically. Days later, the park announced that the ride was closed and was scheduled for demolition. This is why you should never go on a subway again. So what happened is that one night, a teenage girl was taking the subway home from work back to her house in New York. The scary part is when she went on board, she sat directly across from two men with a woman sitting in the middle. The creepy part is that the woman kept staring at her and wouldn't even blink while the two men never once looked at her. Well, at the next stop, a man with a trench coat walked in, but the girl didn't pay much attention to him. The girl kept trying to look away so that one lady wouldn't stare at her, but she just kept looking, wouldn't even blink. Well, at the next stop, that random man with a trench coat pulled out the teenage girl and dragged her out of the subway. She was screaming, asking for help because she had no idea why this guy just pulled her out. But the guy told her to calm down and said he actually saved her life because the woman that was staring at her was actually dead and the two men next to her were holding her up to make her look alive. The random guy with the trench coat said if he didn't pull her out, she was going to be their next victim.